Hi there! In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use iClone's 3D stereoscopic capabilities to create dazzling results in very little time. If you put on your 3D glasses, you can see the amazing way that iClone can really make your renders and animations pop out using 3D stereoscopic technology. If you move your head from left to right while viewing these images, you can really get a better sense of the 3D feel. The first cool thing you can do with 3D in iClone is you can import any of your own media images, videos, or 3D models, and immediately render them in 3D with a simple click. I'll show you how to do this with a brief example. Here I'm dragging and dropping some of my own media files into iClone. Keep in mind that there are many ways to import images. Here I'm right-click dragging and selecting plane as the import method. This means the images will actually import as a 2D plane in the 3D environment. I'm going to drag in a prop too, just for good measure. Might need a little resizing and repositioning. Next, I'll set up the camera for a decent render angle so we can really see the 3D effect. And then I can either go to the top of the work window and click Preview, or I can use the F10 short key. Here you have a simple 3D render that I did in less than a minute with my own images. Again, you can move your head around to get the full 3D experience. So why do some objects pop out and others seem so distant? It basically comes down to something called convergence distance. I'll use this illustration to explain. The convergence point is the focal point of your render. Everything in front of the convergence point will appear to pop out, while those behind it will seem further away. If I want to calculate the convergence point in my render, I have to determine how far the camera is away from the focal object of my scene. I'm using the preview camera, and when I zoom out, I can see that it's about 7 grid lengths, which is equal to about 700 centimeters. I'll change the convergence distance in the export tab, and then do the render again. For an even better 3D effect, I can add in a background in my scene. Here I'm adding in a terrain and background that includes trees far off in the distance, which will provide a stronger 3D effect. As you can see when I preview this time, the focus is on the box, while the background seems to be a little far off. The first image, however, pops out quite a bit. iPhone's authentic 3D is not limited to still images, however can also be used to render 3D animations as well. Here, I'm going to import in a special TV wall from the Reillusion Content Pack Motion Montage Volume 2. Once I reposition the wall to the desired angle, I'll drag in a video that will display on the surface of the wall. As the video counts down, I'll pause it at the 7, and then right-click on the TV wall. I have the option to perform an action called Collapse. After I select the action, you can see the whole wall falls down. Pretty easy, right? With those simple steps and a little simple camera work, you can create great 3D animations like these that could be used for anything from advertisements to dynamic 3D elements in a news show. Remember to enable 3D stereo output before you do your final render. Maybe one of the coolest ways to use 3D in iClone is to take 3D props of real life products and animate them in 3D output. Put on your 3D shades and check out this animation that was done with an iPad prop and a video background. There are a wide variety of 3D models that can be downloaded for free using Google 3D Warehouse. The iPad I'm going to use in the next section can be downloaded there as well. The first part of good 3D product display is smooth motions that really show off your product. 
I'll import in a rotate prop that is included with the Motion Montage Volume 2 pack to help illustrate this. The Motion prop has preset motions included. I'll right click the object and then select one of the many perform actions available for this prop which will give it a full, smooth, 360 degree turn. So we have the motion prop moving. Now what about an actual 3D model? For this, I'm going to bring in my iPad from Google 3D Warehouse. I can use the gizmo to adjust and rotate the iPad to be centered over the motion prop. This is important because I'm going to link it to the motion prop so it will follow the rotation. If the iPad model is away from the center axis, the result will be more of an orbiting motion instead of rotating. Now to link the iPad to the motion prop, I'll make sure the iPad is selected. Then click on Pick Parent. Then select the motion prop. Now, when I play the animation again, the iPad's motion follows that of the motion prop. I can further animate the iPad by simply using movement and keyframes combined with the motion prop's perform actions. The background from the iPad commercial was simply a video imported as a 2D plane into iClone. I'll import the same video in and reposition it to form the background. I can further animate the iPad by simply using movement and keyframes combined with the motion prop's perform actions. If I move to a different frame and move the motion prop to a different location, the playback will show the iPad moving across the screen as it is linked to the motion prop. I can move the iPad's original location up to the top left of the screen and then watch it come down and rotate at the same time. If I press the F3 key, I can enter the keyframe timeline. As you can see, on the row labeled Transform, there is a keyframe marker for the ending position of that movement. If I want the iPad to reach its destination faster, I can move that marker to an earlier frame. Now the iPad will reach its destination and rotate in a stationary position. If you combine these techniques with iClone's authentic 3D capabilities, you can easily make your own product demonstration video like the one that was just shown. The last thing I'll demonstrate is how to bring a live actor into a 3D stereoscopic render. The first thing you'll need is some green screen footage. You can use Reillusion's Pop Video Converter to chroma key the footage, which removes the green background in a single click. You can then export it as an iClone Pop Video file, which can easily be imported into iClone. Right click and drag your live actor video into any scene, such as this White House press conference room which is included with Virtual Studio Volume 2. If you select the Billboard Import option, it means that the live actor will always be facing you, no matter where the camera goes. This is a particularly good method to avoid making your live actor videos seem two-dimensional. I can rotate around the scene to get a good angle for my render. It's always good to try to find angles where there are items close to the camera as well as far away, because it gives your 3D render a lot more depth. As you can see, the cameras in this render really pop out, while the press table seems a bit more far off into the background. It's easy to add animation and life to this 3D render as well, with some simple camera movement. Remembering distance and convergence point are important when doing 3D renders. That's the best way that you can turn a scene like this, that seems like a mess of items, into an animation like this. For more details and tips on iClone's authentic 3D capabilities, check out our more in-depth 3D tutorial, or visit our website.